We're gonna start today off with picking up the SSR faces from the Chrome Shop, finally. And I have a nice shirt on because I'm gonna stop at the courtroom on my way to the Chrome Shop because I had a speeding ticket a few months ago. And the only reason I'm mentioning this is because if you guys get a speeding ticket, don't ever just pay it. Go to the courtroom and just ask for supervision and it'll be cleared from your record. Your insurance won't go up and then you won't lose your license if you have too many tickets. Pro tip. And to my surprise, this morning, I have another ticket. You can't park on the street overnight here. It's quite ridiculous. Can't get away with anything. And yeah, I did get a speeding ticket, but honestly, all the speed limits here are about 15 miles lower than what they should be. Enough about that crap. Let's go check out these wheels. We have finally arrived at the Chrome Shop. Let's see how the faces turned out. Man, oh man. I brought this valve cover to see if he's willing to chrome this. It's for a B20 or a late model B18. Got four pizzas here, hot and ready. You guys already know who we're about to go see. We gotta go see the wheel god, Mr. Andrew. Unfortunately, Andrew is not feeling well today, so we're gonna have to take wheel building into our own hands. I've got them laid out here in the way they will be built, just so it's less confusing. I got the faces already out of the car. So these are the new barrels I ordered, and then I also ordered new lips to resize them and we're gonna reuse these barrels and those lips Andrew gave us. Smokes welded in all the low spots because there was some rash on it and then our friend Nick polished them and made them look beautiful once again. First order of business is gonna be cleaning the hardware. So basically all I do is stick in each bolt into the drill and then I'll use this red scotch bright pad and it'll come out looking something like that. Then I'm going to need to use the same scotch bright pad or something else scuff up the area where we're gonna be applying our sealant, make sure this area is nice and clean. Then I'll also use some brake clean to make sure that any grease is not on the surface where the sealant will be. It was much too cold outside, so we relocated to the basement. We are more than halfway done with polishing these bolts. How's it going over here? Good. <laughs> 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 now the fun begins, assembling the wheels. These faces came out incredible. Unfortunately, I only have two center caps and they are not in the best condition. Not sure if I'm gonna run them or not. Carefully align. <laughs> My next step here is sealing the wheels. I've already sealed these two just to get a hang of it before I filmed and showed you how I do these two. I was planning on taping both sides of the seam, but then I realized the tire is going to be covering the seam. I don't really care if it's not perfect, but I got the second one pretty good. I don't know. I'm pretty satisfied with how it came out. I'll start with pressing in the sealant into the crevice. Once it's coming out evenly, I'll try and pull it down. And if some of it goops up, that's no problem. We'll smear it out after. By the way, this is the stuff I'm using. Now that we have a good seal all the way around, I'll start with the goopiest spot, which looks like this area. Now try and cup this piece of paper, pushing firmly on the outside and then also on the crevice. This will be pulling all the sealant towards the center and down at the same time. I'd say we got a pretty good seal on it. Not too shabby. Just have one left, then I'll let these dry overnight. I can't believe the time is here. We're gonna go visit Andrew and mount these tires on these freshly built SSR wheels. I will have to try and figure out a way to put them all in the Z. This is always fun, especially without scratching them. Yeah, What's fresh. up, brother? <laughs> oh, they did a really good job, oh yeah. Yeah, not too bad. These are the lips that you gave me too. Oh, really? Yeah. That looks brand new. Right? Yeah, smoke's yeah, filled in all the low spots and the rash. And then my friend Nick polished them out. It's just two? I got the other ones oh, stuffed up here. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> Brand new pad. <laughs> Dude, that looks glass. No more scratch. Oh yeah, so this is the one that had the chrome chip off as soon as I unwrapped it. Look. What? What? Right? And there's already a hairline crack here, so. I already sent him a picture of it. I'm like, yo, I just opened these out of the package. He said I can bring it back to get it redone, but I'm like, 
Okay, that's definitely not going to be done before the show, so it's going to have to be after, unfortunately. Well, the good thing is you could take these off without dismounting it. Really? The... Oh. Fire! Woo! Damn. Man! Dude, that's a good stretch. This is why it's important to not have your sealant go around the outside of the crevice because then it makes getting the tire harder to get on. Lessons that I've learned too late. Sorry, Andrew. <laughs> Thankfully, you were able to teach me how to build those serbs, so I was yeah. able to make these. So, appreciate you teaching me. Dude, no problem, dude. Where's the part number, dude? It's <laughs> fresh out the box. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that looks great. You just did that in 30 seconds. Thank you, man. All right, Andrew, thank you for your help today. No problem, dude. I'll see you around. Ah, I'm excited to mount these wheels. We have a lot to do and not a lot of time to do it. I think I'm gonna start with mounting the wheels on the car just because I'm way too excited to see that. And while I have the car in the air, I'll probably put on the rest of this trim. That'll be easy to do. Dropped one of them down here, there it is. And then we'll finish it off with this trunk badge. It's also the trunk key. Pretty cool. Gotta remember how all this linkage works though. Ah, I forgot I still have to install these mirrors too. Hopefully we'll get to that. Now, before I jack this thing all the way up, I wanna show you guys the current ride height because I plan on lowering it just a little bit more. So we have about a three finger gap to the quarter panel and it's also unrolled. So I'm gonna try my best to roll these quarter panels without cracking this new paint. So I have the heat gun out already, trying to warm up the paint so that it folds a little nicer. I'm not gonna do a crazy roll or pull, just enough that it's not gonna contact the tire. Now, this is the moment of truth. Did we rebuild the SSR wheels into the correct spec? Before I lower the car anymore, I'm gonna see how these fit. Man, these things are glowing in the sun. Oh yeah, that's definitely gonna need a slight roll. First impressions, that's hard. Now ideally you would do this before you paint the car. <sighs> I'm putting slight pressure with the microfiber on the edge of the quarter panel. Then I'm hammering the lip of the quarter panel that attaches to the outer wheel well or wheelhouse very slightly. I'm not doing big wax, just I'm evenly moving this entire wheel arch up at the same time. To my surprise, that rolled with no issues. We got no waviness in the quarter panels and now we have plenty of clearance for a tire. This is kind of what it looks like versus a whole lip like this. The next thing I want to do is loosen up the collars on these coilovers so that we can lower them a little bit more. Loosening the bottom, then we're going to spin the threads into this base cup. Got the lower collar loose, and that's the easy part. The hard part is going to be spinning this down. But luckily these don't look too old. These threads look brand new underneath. So I'm going to spin this up a few threads, count how many, and then spin it down to this collar. That way I can evenly do it to the other side. Let's see if this will spin nicely. Oh man, it's not. Might be too much tension. I might have to take it off of the knuckle. It looks like if I use this upper spring perch as an assist, the whole thing spins, which is good. That's what we want. So we can spin this down to our desired height. Oh, it's got a clamp on it. That's why this works. Cause you can actually tighten the sleeve down. I like that feature a lot. Now the question is, how low do we go? VIP low or cruiser low? I lowered it about an inch and a half. Let's measure how many threads we have so we can match it to the other side. And moment of truth, let's test fit this wheel. Not too shabby. We'll have to see how much droop these coilovers have when we lower it down. This is so shiny. It's gonna be cutting it really close to rubbing. I have a feeling we're gonna run into some clearancing issues with this bumper. Either way, now that we're here, we can mount this last trim piece.
That might be perfect, first try. Let's see how the other side fits. I matched it to be the same as the left side. That is so good. I don't even think that's gonna rub, to be honest with you. No adjustments needed. All right, let's get the front on. This one needs quite a bit of adjustment. This is a 17 inch wheel, so it's not exactly the same comparison, but still, that's over five fingers. That's illegal. In the rear, we're looking at three-ish still, although the suspension still has to settle since it was just jacked up. I jacked up the front, which means all the weights on the rear. Check out that fitment. <gasps> Let's see what we're looking like in here. So before I lower the fronts, let's verify that we have the wheel build in the correct spec to clear the coilover. Because if you guys remember when I first got these wheels, I test fitted them on the car, the rear fit pretty good, but the fronts were too wide and they were hitting the coilovers. So hopefully we got our measurements right and we got it spot on. Okay, so far no grinding, that's good. Let's take a closer look and see how close it is. No way, I don't think I could have gotten any closer. That is the perfect spec. In that case, let's take off the wheel and slam the fronts now. And just like the rears, we're gonna break loose this lower collar. I usually just set it on there and then give it a little bit of assistance. And it should loosen right up. If not, it's probably gonna be a hard time. But luckily, these are in good condition still. Let's see, we got quite a ways to go. Cause the front was monster trucking damn near stock height. So I'm gonna drop it that far at least to start. And then same thing, we'll use this top collar to spin the entire sleeve down. Oh no, it's so tight. Oh, this is gonna suck. Sometimes it helps spinning it the opposite direction to break up whatever crud is in there. And because this is the case where it's crusty, I'm gonna spray some WD-40 or something down into the threads. Oh, already easier, that's all it took. Now, if that doesn't work, another thing you can do that I've done in the past is I've taken them off the car completely. These were really rusty coilovers, by the way. And I let them sit in automatic transmission fluid, like a whole bucket. The automatic transmission fluid is a detergent and it will eat away all the grime and they'll look pretty fresh afterwards. I'm sure there's other solvents you can use to break it loose, but that's just something that's worked for me in the past. I have lowered this side to just under two inches. I'm going to match that to the other side. Let's test fit these. All right. Front fitment reveal. Oh man, we can go way lower. But before I lower it anymore, I wanna test drive it around the block just to make sure we're not rubbing on anything already. But man, what do we think? First sight with all the new wheels, new paint, trim. It's looking pretty good. Color's popping right now. I almost feel like the front needs more negative camber. I haven't even adjusted any of the camber yet. No rubbing, that's a good sign. We'll hit the speed bump to confirm that. Oh yeah, we're definitely not low enough. We didn't rub at all. Let's go take this thing back. Oh, I heard a little rub. Yeah, it did not settle very much more. A little bit less than three fingers. The front, oh my gosh. That needs to go way lower. We have plenty of clearance, so let's make it happen. I've lowered the front two wheels an additional inch and a half. So now I'm going to adjust the camber. Luckily this already has camber plates for the top. And we have quite a bit of adjustment. So all we need to do is loosen these four Allens and then scoot it inward to our liking. I'm doing this based off of visual preference right now. And then when I have a chance to get in alignment, we'll get it all dialed and equaled out. But it's not like this is a daily driver or a track car or anything like that. We're just trying to get it to a show and have it look presentable. All four are loose. Push this in. And while these are accessible, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the dampening all the way. You can see it says soft, well, not soft, but you can see it says S and H. H is hard, S is soft. I'm gonna just tighten these all the way, just because at this height, you don't want too much rebound. Also, I never really show the engine bay of this thing. It's nothing really too special, all bone stock, everything works. 
Okay, this will be the adjusted front end fitment reveal. Jesus, who tightened this? How's it look? I can't see it yet. Whew. Is that gonna rub? That might rub. I definitely need to get a smaller tire for the front. We're just gonna have to run it like this for now though. Fitment reveal for the rear. I just lowered it an additional inch and also adjusted the dampening to max hard. Oh yeah, that's sitting right. That's less than two fingers. That's money. Let's take it for a test drive now. The next thing I want to tackle is completing the trunk. We're missing some badges here, one, two, and three. Oh, and I just remembered, we also have some grommets to install. Surprisingly, Nissan still offers these brand new. Check it out, here's my little stash of Nissan parts. Got the bottom ones, and then two tops. Guess how much these cost? If you said $1.50 each, you were correct. Yes, they're that cheap, OEM too. They even had a brand new OEM trunk latch. I might get this one coated so it doesn't rust from the elements. If you guys remember, mine was bent and I had to kind of wiggle it into place. If it's available new, I might as well get it. And it wasn't even that expensive. It was, I want to say less than $30. Can't beat that. Then of course we have the new Gloria badge. And unfortunately they did not offer the Gran Turismo badge new from the factory. So we're gonna have to reuse this one. But I am gonna have to figure out where these badges go in the trunk. But actually, maybe I can use my busted trunk. I think that still has the badges or at least the outline on it. And these are the fog light covers for the front. Still gotta put those on. When I took the old ones off, they were so brittle, they just crumpled. Oh, and to all of you guys who were saying before when I tried to take these off that they screw off, no they're not, I told you. That's why I tried to pry them off, which obviously didn't work either. Now these can be quite difficult to press in without tearing it. So what I like to do is spray just the tiniest amount of WD-40. Since I've already sprayed some out of the can, I know the nozzle will be wet. You don't really need much and get it started. And sometimes that's still not enough. Then I have this punch that'll center into the hole and then I'll twist it in, give an even force. That way it doesn't puncture through. There you go. Grommets have been installed. Now I want to install one of my favorite features about this car that I've yet to be able to use. And that is the trunk keyhole. This may just look like an ordinary badge, but no, it flips open and that's where you put the key. I'm pretty sure this is the one that's for the car. Before we go through the hassle of putting it on, I'm gonna go test it with the key. Andrew also buffed this one out. It had a huge scratch on it. And for those of you who may be new to the channel or are new to what happened to the Gloria, this car was smashed when I bought it. The Gloria was at a complete stop and a CRV ran into the back of it, going around 35-ish miles per hour. Completely crunched in the quarter panel, folded the trunk, folded the rear frame rails and the trunk pan, and it actually came in contact with the badge. But luckily all that's been fixed. <laughs> now we're just doing the fun stuff, putting it all back together, refreshed. All right, I've just confirmed with the key that this is the correct latch. And I left the hardware on this one so we wouldn't lose it. So we just have one 10 or eight millimeter nut and then this sliding clip. But let's start with getting this in there and putting that nut on. Maybe I'll wash that first. Might as well wash over here too where we're gonna be putting the badges. Believe it or not, but it looks like there's access to get this nut on straight up and down. Now this must act as an additional locking tab. You can barely see this one. This has to go on from the side and it latches into the grooves of the cylinder. Now this lock cylinder that we just installed needs to somehow attach to the trunk latch. So we have a clip here that is gonna fit a rod and it looks like we have no clip over here. But this is how the trunk will open by pushing it that way. So we have this rod, which I think is for this situation. And then we have this lever. This has a clip on it as well. So by the looks of it, I'm going to assume this goes on the stud and then just pivots and hits this arm. Let's bolt it on and see how it fits. It looks like it still freely moves even with the nut tightened down. So this is gonna need to pull 
Uh, I tried to look at my photo album, couldn't find any pictures of this. We'll get it figured out though, not too worried about it. I brought the busted trunk out to see if there were some clues. Unfortunately, there is no rod still attached. I've got the bottom one started. So if you ever run into one of these, you basically want to stick the rod in this hole first and then spin the tab around and then it'll clip it. All right, I think we should test it out. Oh, it's pretty far away. Will it really move that far? Ooh, the trunk closes nice with all the grommets in it. Oh, I had low faith because that was a pretty large gap. What up, Tom? Hey, what's up, neighbor? <laughs> hey, neighbor. How's what's your up? day? I'm going to get into skateboarding again. Dude, love to hear it. What do you think about Element or Santa Cruz? I like element boards. I've never had a Santa Cruz. What's the symbol stand for? Uh, it's, this is, well, technically this is a Cedric logo, even though this car is a Nissan Gloria. Nice. <laughs> nice seeing you. You too, bro. Before I throw on these trunk badges, I want to go pay off these two additional parking tickets. I know, four tickets in one video. Welcome to Illinois, baby. This is just for parking on the street overnight. This is the most quiet car I have ever been in. I can hear the ringing in my ears. Also, I forgot to show you guys those lights last night, the C pillar and the B pillar. You can kind of see it over there, but you don't really get the full effect. I'll show you tonight, I won't forget. I meant to show it in the last video. Totally forgot about that, my bad. Looks like there's a trans power option. We got power and snow. Still don't have the mirrors. I need to put those on. <laughs> Nothing like bringing your project car to the police station. All right, after driving the Gloria around town, I think our priority should be putting on the glass. I've been putting this off for far too long. I think this was one of the first things I mentioned putting on and still haven't gotten to it. Now this may seem shocking, but you can actually fold these the opposite direction. Now we have a lot more access. So step one, I think we have to take out this screw because this whole plastic plate needs to come out and it unclips from these four points. I probably could have tried to pry it back as is, but I didn't want to risk breaking anything else. There we go. All right, so now we need to pop these clips off. And remember, this surround is what the mirror is. This is part of the mirror housing. So I think that's why they broke, because these are so difficult to move. I'm gonna have to figure out a different way to install these. There's no way. Okay, now we installed new glass onto this, but this has to be screwed in because there won't be access to get that bolt out. And that's what makes this tricky. So I think what I'm gonna do is either shave down these tabs that clip into here, just so it's not as tight of a fit, or maybe I'll apply some heat to these clips so that they fold a little easier. And I'll risk breaking the glass, trying to squeeze this on, you know what I mean? Ah, sticky situation. Hopefully we don't bust it. Push in the bottom carefully. Please don't crack. Did we get it? Let's test. Oh, we got it. Sweet. Now to tackle the trunk badges. I think I'm gonna start with laying some tape going across, then taking some measurements for how far they are up from the bottom versus how far they are up from here. All right, I keep looking at this exhaust tip and it's so bent. I wanna just try and fix it right now. See if it'll bend at all. This thing's so messed up. I wanna put a new tip on here, maybe even a different muffler. I think dual tip coming out would be sick. Nothing crazy, but I don't know. What do you guys think? This is the factory exhaust. It is an oval, which is so strange. I honestly don't think that looks any better or worse. <laughs> Whatever. All right, so from the bottom, let's see. So this is how far up the badge is on the Gloria logo as well. So I put a piece of tape going equally across the back. So now all I need to do is figure out the dimensions from the inside. So the Gran Turismo badge goes about that far. Got the vertical tape placed into position. 
So there we go. That's where we need to put that badge, right there. Doesn't help that the trunk is very warped on this side, but that's all right, it'll be close enough. No one's really gonna know. I won't even know if it's a millimeter or so off. I forgot I had this gold background Gran Turismo badge. I think I'm gonna use that one instead of this one. This one came off of the blue trunk. This one came off of the OG chassis and it'll match the Gloria badge much better. But I don't have any double-sided tape, so gotta make a parts run. But maybe I'll throw this one on first. Still can't believe this was available brand new. So the G drops down below this tape. So I'm gonna peel back our line just to like there. The backing is really neat. Just peel it back, but look at how it's cut out in the lettering. It, I don't think I've ever put a badge on a car. There is a first for everything, right? What does that look? Is that straight? It's gotta be. It's on our blue line. All right, let's press it in. Oh, that's so satisfying. So crispy. Since this is a Gloria video, I guess we'll take this car to go get some double-sided tape. Can't believe we're running blue tape on this car now too. If you know, you know. It's dark out, I'll show you guys the lights. Oh, the camera doesn't really pick it up too well. It definitely is lighting up more than it's showing, but it still looks sick. And there's a light on the door. So we're just vacuuming out the Gloria and somehow it got here without using the mirrors. Well, I guess I don't really use mirrors too often, but I figured I would adjust them. And I was like, man, where's the switches? You know, cause usually there's buttons either in the center console or on the door. Check this out. It says control box right here, sliding up a little bit, push this down. And then this is, oh, actually this button right here is the dimmer for those lights. Like for example, this is off and it's on. So we'll leave those on cause those are cool. Oh, power folding, hold on. What? Okay, that's freaking sick. But anyways, yeah, this is where the switch is. So we'll adjust the left one. Oh man, I've never had a car have these work correctly. Parked all the way in the back. I swear to God, if I come out and someone's parked next to me, <laughs> that's always my luck. No hostiles inbound. There is a Type R. We've got our S13 workbench here, and I got the Scotch Extreme 3M double-sided tape. It's one of the best ones that I've known, one of the strongest ones. And before I put the double-sided tape onto the badge, I'm going to scrape off all the excess material that's on the back. It's kind of crusty. And then I'm gonna brake clean it and wipe it off. All right, this mounting surface doesn't look too bad. We'll go ahead and start installing some of the double-sided tape. It's definitely not gonna come out as good as the brand new Gloria badge. Now let's line it up and see how it looks. All right, let's press it on and confirm it. Man, this is really starting to set in. This car is nearing completion. The badges make a huge difference. Also the license plate. I need some ideas from you guys. I like having clever plates. 240ZX just flows with the Z because it's a 2.4 liter. The 240 is the main car, so you already know I had to have that plate. But the Gloria, what should I put for this one? I don't want to be too basic and just have it say Gloria. I was thinking totaled, but I don't know. It's not really going to flow too well. Let me know what you guys think. I'm very curious to see what you guys can come up with. And not VIP. VIP is too basic. And we already know Yakuza is already taken. Well, maybe that wasn't for Illinois, but I don't know. It is time to leave for the event and it's raining. Great. Gloria's first rain. How do we work the wipers? Is it up, down, down, okay. Eh, blades aren't the best, but I guess they do work. This is crazy, just cruising through this open building. We need to get one of these carts. Woo, this lighting gets different. I still need to wash the car. It's got some road grime on it, but dude, I wish the Z didn't look like trash right now. Pretty cool seeing this place completely empty. It'll be totally full tomorrow, maybe even tonight. But we brought the Z, not for a show car, because it's pretty beat in the front end, as you guys have seen. Where we're gonna set up a booth. Man, oh man. We wiped down the Gloria with some detail spray. It's looking pretty fresh. 
Ray is helping me do a final polish. Is this a, technically a polish or just a wax? It's just a wax. Okay. Well, it's going to look like polish. <laughs> but he's helping me wax it really quick. And then we're going to go over it with a clean rag. Just to get any swirls out that we may have left on the paint from cleaning the entire car with Windex. We, me and Logan used an entire bottle of window cleaner to clean the car. Because we didn't have anything else. But luckily, that kills me. Yeah, Ray is here to save the day, so thanks, bro. Man, you got such nice swirls. I'm so new to, like, nice <laughs> things, you know what I mean? Like, none of my cars have had this nice of a paint job before. But it's time to start learning. This thing pops. Thank you, brother. You're welcome. God damn. Still gotta do the wheels. Oh, we gotta do the... You're gonna polish the wheels? This thing looks incredible after the waxing. Something about waxing the car makes the purple pop out a lot more. It looks a lot more two-toned. See a lot more of the gray and blue. Did not know that was gonna happen, but very thrilled with the results. I do have two trim pieces I need to put on. I've been so eager to put these on, but I've been waiting till the right moment. I think this is the right moment, right before a car show. I'm not sure what side goes to what, but these cover the bolt holes right here. Looks like it just clips in, no hardware. Oh no, it looks like that's busted. Oh, we just lost a chunk. Damn. All right, well maybe I'll see if I can slide it on, at least for the show. Wow, that's way better. I just used some double-sided tape for now. I'll put it on very loosely so you can see. Ah, you too. <laughs> All right, we're gonna wrap up today with doing some editing here at the track and show. I broke my car. Thank you guys so much for sticking around for yet another video. Let me know how you guys think the Gloria turned out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.